Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 61 of the Cloud Computing Australia show featured on YouTube and podcast with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. This week we're excited to have Bernard Golden back on the show as our special guest. Bernard is the Vice President of Cloud Strategy at Capital One. He is a long time tech innovator and visionary and is the author and co-author of five books including the best-selling cloud computing book ever which is Amazon Web Services for Dummies. Hi Bernard, it's great to have you back on the show this week and thanks for joining us again. Well thank you so much for inviting me uh, back and I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Yeah I'm looking forward to it too and I, know, I certainly know Dave is. Hi Dave, great to have you back on the show again this week, thanks for being part of it. Yeah it's great to be here, it's great to have Bernard back, I love having him on anything He's always a great resource. Yeah, absolutely. Top guest. We, we love Bernard. I can't believe it's been this long. In fact, we only just discussed that it's almost been a, a year to the day that you were on uh, last time. So, uh, look, you know, it's been too long. Uh, welcome back. <laughs> this, is, this is like the doctor's time for the annual checkup. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're looking, you're looking good health. <laughs> well, Brad has his rubber glove on and he's uh, walking toward you, Bernard, so better watch out. <laughs> I think we should. I think we should. We should start the the content now. Let's let's put this. <laughs> Let's put the special gloves away, Bernard, and sit comfortably. Okay, um, so a warm welcome to you both. Uh, in this week's show, we're talking about Amazon Web Services has teamed up with the Australian education technology company, Open Learning, to launch a free introductory massive open online cloud computing course. That's quite the mouthful. It will allow learners to be part of an active online community for co-creation of knowledge in real time, direct from their devices. So look, an open question for you then, guys, or over to you first, David. I take it. Uh, will Australia IT accept training from outside the country now, do you think? I hope so. But, you know, it's funny. I was reading up on some of the Australian uh, content to kind of prepare for the show. And there's a lot of articles about how Australia is very uh, suspicious of China in terms of you know the content that's coming over from them. So will this be different? Will they, in essence, uh, accept learning from outside the country? I, I think it's... Um, absolutely fine to do that. And I, I don't understand why they would have an issue with it. But, you know, going forward, I think this is going to be, you know, something that we're going to have to consider in terms of um, displacing, you know, some of the um, jobs within the native countries in terms of um, people who are, you know, leveraging courses that are overseas, things like that. And also the security issues that are coming forward with some of this stuff, believe it or not. And there's lots of issues that are coming in as terms of people running videos, you know, local on their devices and on their computers, things like that. So it's kind of it's kind of funny. We're not accepting this as readily as we uh, we should. Um, but I kind of understand why people are pushing back on this. So what's your take on this, Bernard? Well, you know, I don't I don't think there's any issues around content external content. Uh, I I partnered with a company called APMG, which is a certification organization. They create certifications for different technologies or different disciplines. Uh, and they, for m many years, were the place if you got an ITIL certification, it emanated out of this company. They approached me and said, let's do one for a cloud computing foundation. And probably the place where it's gotten the most traction, surprisingly, is Australia. And certainly they don't seem to uh, reject it. It's a cloud, it's a Cloud Computing Foundation certification done through this organization, and then that I created the content. So I don't think there's any reason for that. But Dave, you just found all kinds of reasons for me to be scared of external training. Um, you know, sort of, uh, well, I mean, the move toward online training is a huge deal. Um, I guess you have to sort of be, be willing, you know, you have to vet, is the, is the organization delivering the particular training you're taking okay? You know, are they secure, are they trustworthy, et cetera? Yeah, I think that uh, this is popping up uh, now and again, and, and I'm with you on that. I don't think there's really too many security issues around people, you know, taking content. Um, but it's really, you know, kind of the suspicious nature that we have when you're dealing with intercompany, uh, intercountry, excuse me, um, you know, content delivery, where it's, you know, even some of the internet-based stuff that's out there. And so... When you're downloading binaries and you can get Trojan horses and viruses and things like that, it's a, it's a little concerning to some countries out there. 
So people are thinking about security in terms of how they're going to consume this technology. I don't think there's anything wrong with this. Good content is good content, and the reality is that we're, you know, dying for you know to get you know um, the skills in the hands of more people so we can build some more cloud-based systems. I don't think it's really going to be an issue. But you know, moving forward, there's a couple of things that are important here. Number one, we're almost giving away training, and there's lots of um, articles that I found in terms of people who are, you know, almost the giveaway certifications for thirty-five dollars or nothing. Uh, Amazon has kind of taken over the college programs, which is, um, you know, has some downsides and some upsides. But the upside is we're going to be able to build a lot of people who can go out there and make a lot of money. And the reality is that getting at these interactive, you know, very helpful, uh, you know, learning experience for, for people is something that's almost considered open source, you know, going forward. You know, that being said, we have to focus on quality. We have to make sure people are getting the right information at the right time and be able to actually build systems that are going to provide value within the marketplace. But we're getting to a point where this is, in essence, actually a commodity, where it wasn't, you know, even a year ago. Um, so should we consider this something that's free, very much like storage? <laughs> well, maybe. Um, I mean, I, you know, I, I think there'll be gradations. Stuff MOOCs are designed for, you know, massive. That's why it's VMs there, and uh, you know, it's not very differentiated. It's it's not very individually oriented. You know, it's it, I I think the 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 economics of how it's delivered is one thing, um, but I will say, and I agree with you, the need for people to get educated around this is huge, because the cloud computing world is just booming and exploding, and it's super critical that enough talent comes on stream to be able to support the plans that organizations have to deploy applications in the cloud. So the ability to kind of provide certifications through these courses, should this be more, um, what's the word I'm looking for, rigorous, uh, you know, than it, than it is right now. And so I, a lot of people show up who are looking for jobs in my world, and I'm kind of finding that you know, even though they're well certified, that they really don't have the fundamentals in terms of how to build some of these systems. And so they're very kind of book smart, but not necessarily have done anything. So should we have some courses that integrate, you know, kind of um, uh, test workloads, you're building something, you're evaluated by a real human that's looking at what you're building, you're solving real problems. So people will go out into the world kind of armed with this skill that, uh, in essence, is beyond some of the book learning stuff, which is relatively easy to do. But they actually know how to use the fundamentals of building systems, solving problems, things like that. Are we missing that? You know, the wraparound against certifications has always been that they only address the lowest skills or they – are a, a broad base, but they don't really do give a deep dive. They don't tell you exactly how skilled the person is in real world settings. And I think all of those reservations are are accurate. You know, they're designed to sort of say this person has a foundation of knowledge. They're not designed to say this person is really experienced in applying it and so forth. Uh, you know, is it, could there be a certification that, that uh, addresses that? Probably. Um, you know, and then you get into the trade off of to have a more in-depth assessment of a person's skills requires more human interaction, which raises up the cost of it. And so it's sort of a big trade-off there. Um, you know, I think companies have – this is not unique to cloud computing or AWS. This has been the case with certifications across the industry, across all kinds of companies. It's always been the case. Um, so I don't think we should, you know, portray this as being something – only relevant to, to cloud computing or, or AWS. There's always going to be an issue. Companies that just say that don't that don't go through the process of saying, okay, the person has certification, they have, they have a foundation of knowledge. Now I need to drill into that to really understand the details of what they know, or you know, understand how they would be able to apply it in our setting. I, you know, I think that's more on the company than it is on the certification. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're trying to prepare people to, you know, to go work at jobs. And I think that a lot of people are taking the certifications uh, to the point where they're looking at them as kind of real world experience. And I think that architects specifically and also even some of the developer certifications out there 
they need to be more rounded in terms of how people understand the larger part of the world. So it's one thing to be, you know, certified in AWS. It's another thing to have an understanding of storage fundamentals, the ability to understand uh, data integration, the ability to understand the use and, use and augmentation of services, or basically the ability to kind of build things using services, the ability to deal with uh, systemic security kind of beyond the AWS. Uh, um, and I'm not sure they're getting that. And and I think that's that's kind of a core missing thing with a lot of the young people today, they're getting these certifications. They're very narrow in focus, and they're not thinking about the larger issues and the larger uh, architectural holistic things, you know, that we typically have to deal with. And so, you know, I spend a good part of my week explaining to people what a mainframe is, and, you know, what data integration is, and, you know, what, what service orchestration is and service governance is. And, you know, a lot of things that I think really should be fundamental to some of these certifications. So. Do you think this is a matter of them backing up a bit and having certifications that are more rounded? You know, so they're getting to a cloud architecture certification, the specialized, you know, specialist in AWS or Google or Microsoft or whatever, or Alibaba, and we're not necessarily getting to these narrow, you know, kind of skill sets where people are in essence passing the test and they're, you know, looking for their six figure salary and the ability to kind of, you know, um, work on these projects and they end up um, not necessarily understanding 85% of what they need. Well, I, 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 how I hear what you're saying is that certification is great. It shows some specific skills around Alibaba or AWS or Google or Azure or whatever it might be. And that's great. But by the way, there's a whole sort of um, set of tacit knowledge or other kinds of knowledge that need to be aligned with that. So you really understand all the implications. What are the trade-offs in making an architecture a certain way? What are the kinds of things you need to be aware of in terms of security? You know, I think those are really accurate. I, I don't know that the right vehicle to get somebody to get all of that is through the a, 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 an, a, an Alibaba certification or AWS certification. I, you know, there's other methods of that they can they can pursue to get those that kind of knowledge. And it can either be getting a CS degree, or it can be having had you know come up through the ranks, or whatever it is. I don't think it's fair to lay onto one of those certifications that a person who has that certification doesn't have this entire body of knowledge. I think a better way is to sort of say, okay, it's great you've got that certification. You have specific domain knowledge about this particular service or offering or technology. Do you have all the other things that I need for you to be productive in that role? And then examine those things. And again, I sort of put that back on the company that's doing the assessing, or or the you know is doing the hiring in this case. You know, if they just look at somebody, they go, oh, you've got a Alibaba certification. That means you really know how to design systems. You know, I I think that's. I mean, maybe the first person they could make that mistake with, but it's kind of like you know make you know what is there you know fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice. By the second person they should go wait a second i need to make sure they have a well-rounded skill set have i examined that understood it do i you know can i evaluate it do you know to make sure that i get that when i make the hire yeah i think that i think i agree with that i think that uh, what this really kind of comes down to is the fact that we're leveraging you know these sort of certifications that are really becoming free as we just talked about and uh, it looks like it's coming to australia in a big way um with the ability to provide, or excuse me, the ability to understand what's needed for the job in terms of the other skill sets that they need. Uh, and I think that the people are evaluating um, people who are coming to their organization, you know, whether it's AWS certification or something else, are really, you know, kind of not understanding what, holistically what they need. And I think that kind of, that's my core, that's my core point. You know, I let think me, it Let does, me just sort of expand a, a, a couple of things about that that I think are really interesting and important. So the first is AWS making this this uh, initiative shows that there's huge demand for these kinds of skills in the marketplace. And I, you know, I think people who are interested in building a career and so forth should recognize that this is the platform shift going on in the industry. They should find a way to hop onto it and this is a mechanism to do it. This is somewhat akin to when Windows happened, right? All of a sudden, there was huge demand for Windows. People had developed skills. So the first is it's reflective of a technology trend within the industry that's very important. And I just wanted to say, uh, you know, I had a funny experience. Kind of at the opposite end, 
um, there's, you know, I've run engineering groups uh, throughout my career, and one of the cliches we always run into is you could hire somebody with a PhD, and they they knew a ton about something specific, but they didn't have any practical skills. So you bring them into an engineering group, and it'd be like, well, I don't really know how to do source code management, or I don't really know how to program, you know, an industrial system, but I did a great thesis on X. So, um, you know, it's. Uh, I've seen this at both ends, raw rookies with certifications and people with PhDs. Yeah, and I think that's what we're getting at. I think ultimately this is um, uh, the fact that uh, we need to have people who are making good decisions, uh, architectural decisions as they're building these things. And I'm not sure that these certifications really address that. Maybe it's not important that they do address it. We have to kind of ask, you know, in terms of what people's, um, you know, skill sets are in terms of the experiences they had and their ability to kind of, you know, understand holistic what's, holistically what's going on. But I do think what we need to do, you know, along with these very tactical skill sets out there is build up more of a rounded, um, a rounded uh, training base, um, which I don't think exists today. I, there's nothing that I can send people to that is going to provide certifications in terms of how you do you know, systemic um, data integration in a multi-cloud environment, the ability to deal with, um, you know, orchestration across different cloud and cloud environments and mainframe-based systems. Um, there's books that are written upon it and things like that, but if people are looking for some of the training, you know, I'm not sure that it exists right now. And I think that's something that's missing in space. And so as people accept the fact that we're leveraging content from outside the country, and I don't think that's really a big issue, we have to understand that this thing needs to be rounded. And so my concern about Australia and other companies that are, you know, in essence, getting free training from a lot of these providers, and I think it's going to be coming fast and furious, whether it's from, you know, AWS, Google, or Microsoft, or whomever, and it doesn't really matter. And I think kudos to them for providing free training in terms of understanding how they leverage their technology. You know, I do think we're missing, <clears throat> excuse me, we're missing more of a rounding, rounded understanding of how we leverage this technology. And I think that's, you know, going to, going to push us in, in odd directions for some of these larger enterprises that are, you know, getting these people that are trained up in AWS and other uh, tactical skill sets, and they're putting kind of their emphasis on the decisions they're making, and ultimately they're making the wrong decisions. And you and I will have to show up and fix them. So we're trying to prevent that. And eventually, I think you and I want to retire. Well, some at least we'll have jobs. Yeah, but I'm not sure I, I, I want that job, even though that's, you know, it's been my role for the last 20 years. I think ultimately it's a, middle, a matter of making good decisions initially and training people to really go out there and, you know, make calls um, that are going to be, um, you know, add value to the enterprises they're working for. And I'm really kind of scared to death that we're going off and on directions here and we're not necessarily looking at the, you know, the core issues that we need to address. And maybe I'm wrong, but we'll see where we are in five years. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you guys have, have, have raised some incredibly good points, and, and certainly from where, where I sit. The open learning um, database gives Amazon Web Services uh, access to about 700,000 potential users. So um, there, there's a huge, uh, a huge footfall there for Amazon to get their message across to people. So that's very, uh, very interesting and a wise move. But you're absolutely right. There doesn't seem to be anything specific to, to, that, that makes someone shine with all this uh, generalistic uh, training towards cloud. And I think uh, it very much is a, a situational um, hire that, that people need to look at. And it's based on, obviously, the business needs that you and I, they speak about on a, almost a weekly basis of the company, identifying what it needs out of the next hire and being able to demonstrate that to the person they wish to hire to know if they're going to get the right person uh, and not just a shopping list of, uh, of um, credentials on a resume that, that, that says in, in theory that that person is the right person. So um, it's, uh, yeah, you guys have covered some really interesting, interesting points this week. I think it's been fascinating. Um, I don't know, Dave, have you got any top three tips for us this week to, to finish the show? Yeah, I do. I do. When it comes right down to it, it doesn't really matter where the content's coming from. Good content is good content. I think that, you know, we are living in a multinational world, and I think your ability to take content from China or Australia to U.S. or U.S. to Europe or Europe to U.S. or India to U.S. or Europe or whatever, it doesn't really make a difference. And I, I think that we should really kind of focus on what that content is as the discussion really you know, um, bear down. And so it has to be holistically rounded and you'd be able to find lots of learning opportunities. 
And I'm just kind of enamored. You know, I got into YouTube, you know, a couple, three years ago, whether I'm, you know, fixing a water heater or, you know, learning how to barbecue, the ability to kind of find out everything that you need from lots of different people and kind of make some good decisions around understanding those things you don't know a lot about. And I think we need to, be, in essence, have YouTube for cloud computing or YouTube training or something like that, where we have, you no, know, not just 100 courses that lead you to certification, but thousands of courses that will really kind of take you down the road of being good, well-rounded architect, cloud architect. I understand the cost for employee as, as some of this training comes out, because you got to remember your employees are going to be um, paying attention to these courses and that costs you money. So even though the content may be very inexpensive and you know, almost free, their the time and away from what they do and being productive in their jobs is going to have a cost. And I think people need to, you know, kind of figure out those metrics. So a lot cheaper than it was before, but I think that's what you need to understand. And training is more than just courses, you know, as we discussed during this um, and during this uh, video. So your ability to kind of understand and how to get OJT on the job training and how to leverage this stuff and be excellent at doing it, you know, is going to be part of it. And you really can't get that through a video. You have to kind of get your hands dirty and get, you know, as, as Bernard can tell you, and, you know, make things work um, and get to lots of different uh, successful conclusions how you're leveraging technology and, and uh, to be good at it. So, you know, go off and do no harm. Great top tips there, Dave. Thank you again. They're awesome. You got it, man. And, and Bernard, thanks for being on the Australia show this week. It's uh, been an absolute pleasure to have you back. Well, thank you uh, so much for inviting me. It's been a great conversation. Really enjoyed it. And I'm always happy to talk to somebody in Australia. Um, well, uh, you know, it's great talking to you. And we've got another two shows. So if everyone watching this right now, stay tuned because we've got the C-Level Management Show, the C-Suite Show coming up. And also we've got the training show. And Bernard is, has said and been good enough to stick around for both of those as well, which is exciting. So look forward to recording those. So look, thanks everyone. You can get us all on Twitter as well. So Bernard's on Twitter, which is at Bernard Golden. Uh, David's on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Obviously we're on all the social media as well. So come and check us out. All the links are in the description box below along with the links to David's blogs that he writes for us as well so check those out remember to like subscribe comment on the channel uh, we love the feedback that we get on social media with all the content we put out there it's it's really important and, and the support you give uh, means a lot to us so uh, carry on doing that as well so thanks for watching and until next week